ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ben Kingsley. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene, your Royal Highness. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to tonight's Royal Gala in aid of the Duke of Edinburgh appeal and in celebration of one of England's treasured sons. Born to us, today he belongs to the world. Please join us, his brothers and sisters in art, in honoring Bob Hope. Your Royal Highness, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you a, a short but true story. About 40 years ago, in a very tough area of South London called the Elephant and Castle, there was a youth club called Clubland. And it was run by a very tough vicar called the Reverend Jimmy Butterworth. And he had two missions in life. One was to keep the kids off the streets and out of trouble. And the other was to raise money for the club, which was supported entirely by voluntary contributions. Well, eventually, he realized that he couldn't keep up the collections. And unless he got a great deal of money, he was going to have to close the club. And in his own words, he needed a miracle. And a miracle came along in the shape of Bob Hope. Bob Hope heard about the plight of Reverend Butterworth and his club, and he came over to England, and he did a show for two weeks at the Prince of Wales and gave his entire fee to the club. And on the last Saturday night, Reverend Butterworth took a few of his scruffs from the club on a big treat up the West End to see Bob Hope. And when the last show was over, there were speeches, and it was very emotional. And he asked one of the kids, on behalf of the rest of the kids, to stand up and thank Mr. Hope for his generosity. And a very nervous, scruffy, cockney kid got up, and he thanked Mr. Hope, and very sheepishly sat down. And that was the very first public speech that I ever made. For the next four years, I attended the drama class at this club. And it was the place where I acted for the first time and where I decided if I could one day to be a professional actor. And over the years, I've sometimes wondered what would have happened to me if Bob Hope hadn't given the money to the club, the club had closed, and I had never attended the drama class. Maybe I would have become an actor anyway, but on the other hand, you never know. So just in case, and once again, on behalf of the kids and me, thank you, Bob. God bless. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is our honor to invite to our stage His Royal Highness Prince Philip 
the Duke of Edinburgh. Tell the entertainment's over. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to do is to uh, thank uh, Bob Hope for having the idea of bringing his show to London and to have us all to his birthday party. He's not quite made it yet. It's another 10 days or so, I think. <laughs> but I think he'll make it. <laughs> and also to thank Dolores for taking part. And really, he's been a great friend of this country. He's, as you heard from Michael Caine, he started his good works here many years ago, and he's been doing them ever since. He's a very generous, kind-hearted chap. And occasionally, he's also quite funny. <laughs> he wouldn't like to turn those lights off again. It was cool for the first time this year. But I must tell you, this, um, this cheque is made out of the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme. And if you've actually got a programme, you can read about it. But what I just wanted to tell you is that it, this programme is now uh, being operated in a number of different countries. And it's, uh, it's also being operated in the United States under the name of the Congressional Award. So we're a big family in this case, and he's helping his own country and his own children there, the young people, just as much as he is here. And we're very grateful to him. And on behalf of all the audience, thank you and all your guests or your friends who entertained us here very much. A very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you.